Ripple CEO claims that the SEC is a bully. Hey, what's going on, XRP Army? Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. So today we have an awesome video for you. Here we are on the daily charts for XRP. Currently, we are down 4.64%, but we have a great video for you. We're going to jump into the charts here today for sure. We're also going to be jumping over this article. Ripple CEO claims the SEC is a bully trying to regulate through enforcement. We're also going to be taking a look at this article here. Shiba Inu's burn rate is greater than 1,000%, but SHIB is still under triple zero or double zero one, and here's why. And for all of you Deegans out there, we're also going to be jumping into the Terra Luna Classic enjoys hefty uptick as Binance introduces incredible LUNC burn mechanism. So we have an awesome video for you today. And if you're new here, my name is Ryan Huggins, and I'm a crypto and real estate investor here in Orange County, California. And my job is to help be your crypto shortcut, because if you're like most people, probably don't have the opportunity to spend hours a day reading through all the articles and watching all the YouTube and charting. But that's what we do. And we bring that content to you in a condensed manner. So subscribe if you feel that this is great content. Here we are on the daily charts, XRP, as we mentioned, down 4.76%. And we have been talking about the potential of this dropping back into its supply and demand pocket here, which as we can see on the daily charts, if we take our Heikinashi candles, the last red candle before the big up move, that gave us this one right here. So back to that 34 cent level is the potential support there on the daily. Now we also have now developed our upside resistance level, right? Because this is our daily supply and demand box. You can see we've got our first official red Heiken Ashi downward candle on XRP since the massive run. And that box is giving us now the numbers from the bottom of 47 cents to the top of 52 cents. Now you can also see that it did recently reach right exactly on our 1100 E or exponential moving average. That is right, 1100 day exponential moving average. It tapped it exactly and now it's having a bit of a pullback. So as we can see here on the daily candles, we do currently have one hour, 48 minutes left in this candles. It has busted through the bottom. Taking a look here down at the bottom, we do have our RSI that we use here. This one is called the TDI plus RSI with divergences. You can see we did have this incredible amazing bullish divergence on the daily charts the day before the first initial pump we did have the pullback of the move and then boom the rocket ship to the upside right now though we are showing some extremely bearish indications number one we have the shark fin the shark fin has developed on the upside of the rsi and it has also broken back down through the volatility band which is the white line here and we are also now having a red background. So if we zoom in here, we've got to get real close, but you can see the background of that has now switched to the red background. And as we can see, when a red background occurs, there is a small drop that can be had, a large drop that can be had. We're just going to continue charting this every single day. So make sure you click that subscribe button so you can stick along with us. But here's what we've got. The daily chart has now busted through. We're going to take a look here at the four hour chart. As you can see, it did bust through the bottom and it has multiple times now one, two, three. And this one gave up, has tried to bust through that section there and it is starting to drop. So, this is our second four hour candle since the last attempt to bust back into that uh, supply and demand box. Now, what we need to take a look at now that we're on a smaller time frame. Let's jump back to Heikinashi candles and see where's the downward movement that could be happening. We have our last red candle before the up move right here. Now this one is going to be red because it's the four hour. And then also these I messed up and we're going to switch that to yellow. That will let us know that they're daily. So I do use the color codes here, yellow for daily, red for the four hours. And then I do also even use blue for the one hour. And what you'll notice is as you drop down into smaller time frames, you'll run into more frequent interference. So right now though, we are looking like we have the potential of pulling back into this zone here of 40 cents. If it breaks the moving average here, the 1100 moving average on the four hour, 
And then we also have our 50 exponential moving average here. Those are going to definitely come in as supports. And if we do drop down to the one hour, we can also take a look right here. There is going to be another support level and we'll go ahead and color this one in as well. So this one's gonna be blue because that's gonna be on our one hour time frame. So on the moves, right? So right now we have now dropped below the 50 exponential moving average. We could likely be returning to this section here, 43 cents. And then that will try to hold as a support. Do we get a rebound or does the continued drop happen? As we can see right now, the RSI has bottomed out at the oversold position at 30 on the one hour, battling back up. The RSI is battling back up, but price has continued to trade sideways. So that is actually a potentially bullish indication. So we're going to see right now we can see when we switch back to Japanese candlesticks, it did get back to the yellow line which would be the market baseline or the average in price on the RSI here for the one hour, and it rejected. It may very well be returning down to the bottom side. Back to the four hour charts, we take a look here. The four hours, this gives us a little more dire uh, situation here because as we can see, price has only dropped to the 50 level. So we do severely need a rebound here off the 50 level. For those of you that don't know, on the RSI, 70 is overbought, meaning it's too expensive. 30 is oversold, meaning it's like at a premium. It's at a super big discount. The in between the 50 is the battle. Well, above or below the 50 means bull or bear. Above the 50 is bull, below the 50 is bear. And right now, our number is currently coming in at 48.6. So that's showing a little bearish indication. And it is also showing sloping down to the downside. We also have our market baseline sloping down. We also have our uh, volatility bands expanding, meaning that there's actually lots of room to go to the downside. It's 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 not holding as a support. It's breaking down on the four hour. So we may have that continued drop. Again, going back to the daily here, the daily obviously extremely high. It's very, very bullish in that as aspect. It got over the 70. It was over 75. So it was overbought, meaning it was like over, it was just, too expensive for what it was supposed to be. And now it's recovering itself right now. Also jumping over to another one of our indicators here. Let's go ahead and turn that off, turn that off. And we'll jump into, oh, not that one. We'll go to the fair value gaps here, the imbalances that are still available. And let's look and see where they are. So here we are on the daily imbalances. You can see we do have a fair value gap that falls right in line with our one hour supply and demand zone. So this could be a strong potential rebound here. So price could definitely come and fill this whole gap up when it gets to the bottom of that gap. It's also getting right at the support level here at 43 cents. Then do we see a rally to the upside? Because what we could see is another big price spike getting a new higher high. So something along the lines of this here, then retesting, getting up here, and then boom, making a new higher high while the RSI continues to drop like this, right? So boom, RSI comes up here, tests this, and then does not, does not have a new higher high on the RSI, but a new higher high on price, just like a crazy wick explosion to the upside. Then all of a sudden you have that bearish divergence on XRP down at the bottom. Ripple CEO claims the SEC is bullying trying to regulate through enforcement as the legal battle between Ripple and the United States Securities Exchange Commission, SEC drags on, the blockchain company's chief executive officer, officer has scathing criticism for the regulator. Now, one thing I will have to say about Brad Garlinghouse, he's got balls of steel. This guy has been calling out the SEC for a very long time now, and that is super dangerous. He has spent hundreds of millions of dollars to defend his company against the corrupt government agency of the SEC of what they're doing. And it is going to be really, really an amazing day when all comes to light and XRP and Ripple win this case because it is pretty, pretty disgusting what the SEC has done to them. Specifically, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse believes the SEC can be characterized as being a bully that is trying to regulate through enforcement in his interview with CNBC Crypto World's McKinsey Sigalos, published on September 23rd. Bullying crypto companies into submission 
In the interview, the Ripple CEO highlighted that 95% of his company's growth was from customers outside of the U.S., partly because the rules of the road are clear in those countries, as well as because the SEC's regulation practices. And he says here, the SEC is trying to regulate through enforcement. That's a super inefficient way to do this, as opposed to let's, let's do the work, let's provide the clarity. Furthermore, Garlinghouse referred to the SEC as being a bully, forcing cryptocurrency companies to simply give up as they can't afford to waste money on lawsuits that require a lot of time. I would rather character, I would characterize the SEC has built a reputation I think it deserves as being a bully. Many players in the SEC have gone after simply have to fold their cards. He also reminded the fact that Ripple has already spent over 100 million defending ourselves in a case that we have tried to move forward as quickly as we can, and the SEC has gone as slowly as they can. As an example, the SEC intentionally dragging the case, Garlinghouse mentioned that the fact that the judge has ordered the regulator five times in the last 18 months to turn over the notes from the earlier case in which the SEC claimed Ethereum was not a security. The judge is ordering the SEC to turn over these notes over and they won't do it. And they come, they keep coming up with new reasons why. So much so that the judge in her most recent ruling said the SEC is being hypocritical and not following faithful allegiance to the law. According to the Ripple CEO, these, damage, these are damning words for an agency whose mission is stated as to protect investors. In the case of Ripple lawsuit, they destroyed $15 billion worth of value in the XRP market when they filed the lawsuit that was not protecting investors. And in case you're not aware of what's going on, the SEC is suing Ripple over claims that it was issuing the XRP tokens illegally as the regulator sees them as securities. Recently, Ripple has filed a motion to dismiss claiming the tokens can't be securities due to the lack of an investment contract, giving investors rights or oblig obliging the issuer to act in their interest, as Finbold reported. So let me know down in the comments, is SEC a great company or a great organization, or are they being bullies and are they overstepping their bounds here? Continue on with altcoins here. Shiba Inu's burn rate is more than 1,000%, but SHIB is under 001, and here's why. Two thirds, that's how much of the value of Shiba Inu disappeared so far in 2022. Even the biggest fans of the meme coin aren't woofing it up much these days. However, there's at least one reason for hope. Notably, more Shiba Inu holders are burning their tokens. But the question is, can Shiba Inu even burn its way to double zero one? Pup on fire. At the time of writing, SHIB struggling to reclaim the lost position as it suffered a fresh 4% correction on coin market cap at the time of writing, it traded at quad 0109 mark, and we will be jumping over the charts here for Shiba Inu in just a moment. The price didn't look much praiseworthy, but SHIB's community left no stone unturned in burning SHIB's supply. Just in, the SHIB burn rate is up 1,031% today. And at the time of writing, as per Shiba Burn's official website, the burning rate stood somewhere near 800% mark, despite the decrease such an unprecedented burning rate still created headlines in the crypto community. So here we have a picture here of Shiba Inu supply, total burnt from the initial supply. We have hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, and trillions. That's correct. 410 trillion have been burnt of the 999 trillion, leaving a total supply of 589 trillion left. And on top of that, 29 Almost 30 million of those SHIB are also staked. Burn rate in the last 24 hours, 743%. And in the last 24 hours, we have hundreds, thousands, millions, 128 million coins have been burned. Notably, burning reduces the supply of the SHIB Inu tokens in circulation, assuming the demand for the cryptocurrency doesn't fall. Continued burner burning would sooner or later push SHIB's price. But you might ask, how much burning would it take? Well, there's still a lot left to burn of SHIB could reach its burning epitome. The number of SHIB burned has resulted in a rather small figure of 129 million SHIB equivalent to $1,430. Over the past week, however, 318.7 million SHIB equivalent to 3,500 were sent to a dead address. In fact, two weeks ago, SHIB witnessed its renowned token burning campaign hit a new burn rate in the 48 our timeline, the token burned close to 200 million coins following 
with which the burn rate spiked by nearly 3,000%. Then why, you might ask, why isn't the price increasing? Well, the increase in the burn rate still doesn't allow more than 10.4 billion SHIB, equivalent to 115,000 to be burned in these three months. In addition to this, net deposits on exchanges stood high compared to seven-day average as per data from CryptoQuant. So as you can see here, exchange reserve, exchange net flow total. All right, now let's jump over here quickly to the Shiba Inu charts. We're looking at the daily here. We did uh, just pull up a naked chart. Let's put up some indicators here, see what's going on. So first and foremost, we'll head over here to our TDI, the RSI number. It is starting to climb its way back up. As you can see, it did peak out of the bottom of the volatility band. It's starting to try to make its way up. When we take a look here at the daily or the weekly, sorry, we have recently experienced a hidden bearish divergence after this candle on the weekly charts, and we have continued having a bearish drop since then. Let's go ahead and switch over to Heikinashi here. We do have, this is our bottom side weekly candle. Our weekly candles, we are coloring in white. And as you can see right now, it is acting as a support. We have dipped inside of there a little bit, but more than likely, well, actually doing a closer look, it is not getting itself out of that box. It tried and it's resisting in there. So now that we're on the daily, let's go ahead and clear this and let's look at the daily supply and demand zone where it could be going. So our daily would be down here. That gets us to 50836, color that box in yellow. And then we also have all of these little daily spots here too. We'll go ahead and color this one in. That does cover this one, that does cover this one and that one. So we likely, if we come back, our support level before gain, giving way to the lower down, downward side of the five zero territory, we would be lucky to be catching up here at quad zero one zero one six. And the bottom of that is currently at five zero nine seven six. So that's where our next level of support is. If we do get a nice support and a bounce there, we could likely move to the upside here, looking at quad zero, one, two, five, two. And if we drop to the four hour charts and look a little deeper here, that does look like the range that we're trading in. Let's go ahead and clear the drawings off and give us a better, let's go with the horizontal line here. And horizontal line right here. So this has been a support, been acting as a resistance. So that would be the top side for us. And then we'll use this down here, right about there. That's the channel that we're trading in. So between quad zero one, one, seven, three and quad zero one, zero, there are some interference zones in between there. So if we do our four hour downward side here, this one's the four hour, you can see that that did actually act as a support. And that would be the quad zero one, zero, eight, six. If we drop below that big box, we go to here and that gets us to quad zero one zero five six. So that's where price could be going. Very likely could be catching a support here. We can see right now the RSI is climbing up. The market baseline is climbing up and we're about to actually cross over the market baseline with the RSI turning our background dark green again, indicating more of a bullish scenario. So we could see another push up to this zone, to the top side resistance in the near future. Terra Luna Classic enjoys a hefty uptick as Binance introduces incredible Luna Classic burn mechanism. Binance to burn all Luna Classic trading fees. The world's largest cryptocurrency exchange by trading volume, Binance announced Monday that it would be burning all trading fees occurred by the company on Terra Classic Luna Classic spot and margin pairs against BUSD and USDT. The trading commissions on LUNC spot and margin trading pairs from the previous week will be converted to LUNC and automatically sent to the burn address every Monday at zero UTC. The report on the burn and the following on-chain burn transaction ID will be updated every Tuesday at zero UTC. The first batch of trading fees to be burned will be calculated September 21st to October 2nd. So this is, we're currently in the first week of burning. The surprising decision comes after the abandonment of the exchange's prior plan to introduce a flat trading tax of 1.2% for all Luna Classic trading after opt-in traders 
reach 50% of the total Luna Classic trading volume on the exchange. Binance CEO CZ noted that the opt-in proposal would take a lot of time to implement and was also met with skepticism by LUNC community. As such, the exchange decided to come up with a new solution to help the community bring down Luna Classic's bloated circulating supply. And here is the tweet from CZ. Three things here. Luna Classic community wasn't happy with this approach. It's going to take a while to develop. It's not going to work anyway. Our traders won't vote for it. Since then, we were discussing a better, quicker way to support the community. Instead, we have decided to begin burning all trading fees collected by the Luna Classic BUSD and USDT spot pairs. Fees will be converted to Luna Classic and then sent to a burn address. The market quickly reacts. Binance announcement well received as enthusiasts rush to get a piece of Luna Classic. Luna Classic gained a whopping 38% in the last 24 hours. Still, the token is changing hands at a fraction of the cost, only triple zero three to be precise, and is down approximately 100% since the start of the year. Terra's multi-billion dollar collapse in May was the epicenter of the present predicament in the crypto market and triggered the insolvency of several high-profile crypto lenders. Efforts to revive the old Terra blockchain have progressed somewhat slowly. On the other hand, the spectrum South Korean authorities are hunting for Doquan. It was announced today that Interpol has issued a red notice for the Terraform Labs co-founder. This means that law enforcement worldwide is now tracing Quan's whereabouts to potentially arrest him before his repatriation to his home country of South Korea. And taking a little look here at Luna Classic, we can see... I mean, we were actually on our way to a very, very sad state of affairs for Luna Classic before this announcement today. And doesn't mean it's officially over, but what I mean by that is it had just recently broke this extremely, extremely important level of support yesterday. And it was about to crash its way all the way back down here to triple zero one again, and then even potentially all the way down here to quad zero nine two zero one. So it would be trading at shiba inu prices down here but instead this announcement has given it a spark of life it has bounced up looks like it's heading up here to its potential resistance level of triple zero three four six if it can hit that gain that as a support then we could even move up in here to triple zero four four three seven seven the ultimate return to the tippity top is all the way up here at triple zero five nine three zero that is the highest price for Luna Classic at this point. Now, obviously, the original Luna, you know, significantly higher. So still, hopefully we get some sort of rebound. Hopefully you holders out there of Luna Classic that you were airdropped for the Luna tokens that you were holding. Hopefully they regain value and you can be made whole again or part or something better than zero.